And with no formal announcement, Starlink, SpaceX Starlink Internet Service, has decided to display and debut new Square dishes on their store on November 10th. And that's exciting. And there are a lot of differences that we can see outside of just appearance when you scan through all the tech support issues and what's listed in the store for each item. And some of these differences are good. Some of them are bad. I don't think any of them are truly game-breaking but well, let's go through them one by one. Of course, right off the bat, the biggest difference is appearance. Now, both dishes are a phased array antenna, just a flat surface. So the actual shape should have a much, much of an impact on the actual performance of the unit. I would expect no difference there. But what is kind of interesting to note is having worked in tech support before, I do think the reasoning for a huge change in design from circular to square could be because if someone is having issue with their unit and they're calling tech support, it's very easy to figure out which one they're talking about. Is it circular or is it square? So they know how to diagnose the issue. I honestly think that had a pretty big part in that decision-making process. Now, one huge difference and one big, big improvement compared to the old version is a detachable cable between your dish and the router. I cannot explain how important that is because anybody that has damaged the cable, you have to return the whole Starlink unit to get it fixed. Now you can just get a cable to fix your problem. And the really nice thing about having this detachable cable is you can choose a length that's good for you. Right now in the Starlink store, you can buy either a 75 foot cable or a 150 foot cable. That way you can choose what will better fit your need instead of the standard 100 foot cable with the circular dish. Now it is worth noting that you get 100 feet with the circular unit as opposed to 75 feet by default with the rectangular unit. So you do get less length, but you can very easily just get a longer cable. No clue exactly how much this costs because I cannot view the store because I do not have a rectangular unit. More on that in a moment. So again, that detachable cable huge when it comes to fixing things. I love that so much. The other thing I really love is it has removed the power brick from the circular unit. How it worked before is you had your circular dish, you'd plug that ethernet cable into a PoE injector, basically a power source, a power brick, and then you had another ethernet cable go from that power brick to the router. It now has completely removed that power brick from the equation, and now you go straight from the dish to the router, and I think that is a huge advantage just because it gets one less thing out of the way. Now one downside with the new setup when it comes to the router is the new router no longer has an auxiliary port or an extra ethernet port built into the unit, which means you can no longer use wireless as well as have something plugged in like a smart TV or an Xbox or a PC. You can no longer do both simultaneously out of the box. They do, however, offer an extra adapter. So out of the box, if you're planning on doing wireless and wired, like my current setup, unfortunately, you're gonna have to buy an extra adapter. So the ethernet adapter here is $20 for the privilege of being able to use a wired device, which again, you should be using anyway, especially for things like TVs and computers, because wired will always be better than wireless. I don't wanna hear it. And you know, uh, $20 is a bit steep for just the privilege of doing that. But the funny thing is how I was just bragging about how nice it is to not have the power brick. Having to have the privilege of using Ethernet, you just have this new dongle hanging around again. In fact, literally on the website, it's called a dongle. So that's not cool. I'm not a huge fan of that. That's kind of a point of frustration. Personally, I don't see why it was so difficult to have an ethernet port on the router, but I digress. And the only reason I was able to find how much that ethernet adapter cost is because somebody was able to hyperlink to it directly who just ordered Starlink on the Starlink subreddit. I cannot see it or any of the other things for the square unit of Starlink because I already have a circular version. And I do think it is kind of smart by Starlink to not show you things that won't work for your product because it knows already what you have. Although I would like to see how much some of these things cost for the new unit. The mounting solutions are all now all different on the new Starlink dish as well. The diameters for the mounts are all different, which means the existing roof stuff, those apparently are not null and void. You'll have to get new ones for a square in it. 
But again, the circular units are going nowhere. And as far as I can tell, that is all the differences that I have been able to uncover. There may be four, and of course there will be upcoming Starlink launches where they may discuss this new dish in detail. So again, the good, it removes the power brick, really like that. The detachable cable is a huge plus. Big fan of that, but a big negative is the default router no longer includes an ethernet port to plug thing in. You'll have to get an adapter for that. That is a big minus. I can't imagine why that was such a problem to include by default. Maybe hopefully with some feedback that can change in the future. Thanks for watching this video. If you want more Starlink content, a lot more coming your way. We're planning out all sorts of fun stuff once this thing becomes mobile. How about gaming in an Iowa cornfield? I'm really looking forward to that. Stay tuned for our videos. Give this like if you liked it and stay subscribed and we'll see you again at the next video.